All right, so part of uh, being able to get followers is to uh, have something for your followers to care about. Properly filling out our profile is one of those things. The other thing is also a little bit of content to entice people. We're a good account to follow. We want people to the, that care about us on Google Plus to follow us so that whenever I post something, that could lead to conversions. And that's the fancy marketing term of a goal. Conversions are goals. Someone that visits my website and hasn't bought a product has not been converted. But once they buy my product, they are a conversion. They came to my website, they were not a buyer, they bought my product, they've been converted. It's a conversion. So I still want to use social media for that. I want to get leads, I want to get clicks from my social networks to my website, where then hopefully then I get conversions. They bought my product, they signed up for my newsletter, they read my poem, whatever it is you're trying to get them to do on your website. Doesn't matter. They're all conversions, conversion goals. But in order to bring an audience from Google+, we need to build an audience. And right now I have zero followers. So hover over the, the menu at the top left, whatever yours says. Hover over your menu and select Stream. Stream is like the timeline on Facebook or the wall. Stream is where you would see the content of the accounts that your account is following because a page can follow other pages, a page can follow people's content. So mine is empty. Remember when you were creating your account and it might have been saying, don't you want to connect with your friends? Don't you want to follow these interests? Don't you want to recommend your friends? Because if you don't, it's going to be empty. And that's what people are going to say, Google Plus is a ghost town, it's not going to work for me. We're just not looking in the right place. But right now, if someone were to visit my profile, they would see nothing. There's no enticement for them to follow. So let's take a moment to publish, to no one, a few posts. Because when someone does visit my profile, they will at least see something. And hopefully they will see something that resonates with them, and then they want to follow. So some of the things that we can publish. We can post text, posts, photo posts, links, videos, events, and polls. Let's add our very first text post. So just click the text icon. You get this screen here where you can write a bunch of text, and actually you can mix and match. You can add a picture to your text. You can add a text to your video. You can ma mix and match them, no problem. I selected text. Um, I'm going to write something here. For example, we are happy to be on Google+. Plus. Well, that's okay, but remember, think about writing content in terms about what your audience would care about. Let's say that there is this mythical audience out there of people that liked, you know, vegan-friendly baked goods. So what can I write here? Now, I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying I want to reach that audience that, that is there somewhere. Um, I want to reach that audience. And so that's not enough to entice you to follow my account. So I have to think in the terms of my audience. What would my audience care about here? So we're happy to be on Google+. Plus. Follow us. But actually the terminology on Google+, Plus is circle us. So you could say follow us, that's fine, but the terminology here is circle us. Circle us for exclusive coupons and fun stuff. Now, do you need to say circle us on Google Plus, or is that kind of redundant? That's a little redundant. The, uh, people assume, this assumes that people are already on Google+, and they will not be able to circle you without a Google Plus account. If I was sending this as an email to people, I would say circle us on Google+, for the coupons. But being on Google+, would be redundant to say circle us on Google+, just like follow us on Facebook when you're already on Facebook. So again, what would be interesting relevant to your audience. 
Um, this might entice people that you're going to get exclusive coupons. I might say that you're going to see exclusive behind-the-scenes photos. I might say, um, you know, circle us uh, to join our contests or our vibrant community or share your recipes or whatever I'm trying to do to get an audience on, on social media, any social media. We'll use the same concept in Twitter, Pinterest, etc. What's in it for, the, for your followers? Why would they care to follow you? And this is not something that I'm going to spend half an hour on to craft because social media is very, many times, stream of conscious. You're going to add something right now and something tomorrow and something later. And you will take time to craft it, but you don't have to go overboard fully crafting every single message about it, every single post, because you're going to be posting on a regular basis that something new is going to be put out constantly, so you're hopefully going to be reaching an audience in the long term. This is enough for that moment, but what I want to do is show you that one of the things that Google Plus has that none of the networks have at the moment is the ability to add a little bit of text formatting to your text. Right now, this is going to look like plain text like that. But if you know this secret here, you can add bold text, italic text, and underlined text. So for example, we're happy to finally be on Google+, and I want the word finally to be bold. What we have to do is write an asterisk around the word or sentence that we want to make bold it will not become bold until we publish it, so don't worry that it's not bold yet. But anywhere you put asterisks, which is shift 8, right? shift 8, wrap an asterisk where you want to start bold and where you want to end bold, and that will become bold when we publish. We're happy to finally be on Google+. Circle us for exclusive coupons. I want to make that stand out too. I want to do italics this time. Italics are underscores. I put an underscore where I want to start the italic, and then I put an underscore where I want to end the italics. You won't see it until you publish. You have bold italic and strike through. Strike through is not that useful, but if you want to use it, it's like this. Um, A dash. You start the dash, you end the dash, and that'll be strike through. It'll just be a line going through, kind of like a contract where you strike lines out. Again, I don't see too much use for the strike through. You might, but bold is, is, is asterisks. Let me write it here actually. So, um, asterisks, bold, underscores is italics. It's somewhere hidden. It's somewhere hidden in the help oh. section. I think so. Yeah, because that's the thing about design. Uh, if you go overboard with different fonts or different italics and all of that, then that thing that was supposed to be for emphasis use, loses meaning. So maybe they do make it a little bit esoteric. Is this just for Google Plus? Yes, just for Google Plus. So we'll see how that looks in a moment. Again, we can mix and match. Maybe also add a video. Maybe also a poll. But we're fine just text for the moment. Next we come to who are we who are we targeting here? Who is this being directed to? Right now it's being sent public, so anyone that finds my profile on Google Plus can see this. I don't have any followers, but if I had followers, they could also see it. So right now it's public. Anyone could see it. And notice if you hover your mouse over it, it should pop up to tell you. This may be visible by anyone, anywhere. People may find it on a Google search, on a YouTube search, on a mobile search. It's totally public. Usually you're going to be publishing public, especially if you're a company. You want to reach an audience. 
I'm going to cancel that. See how there's a little X? And then it says add names, circles, or email addresses. If you click there, we had public, and we have something called your circles. Your circles is everyone in your circles except the ones you're just following. So in Google+, Plus, once you follow an account, you've circled them. Once someone follows you, they've circled you. The circles are basically like folders to organize people. Because I could follow, let's say I've got this bakery. Well, let's say I've got a pet shop. I've got a pet shop, and I've followed 10 accounts, 10 people on Google+. But some of those people are really into dogs, some are really into cats, and some are really into birds. So I'm going to follow, I'm going to circle those people, but I'm going to put some of them into the dog people circle, and some into the cat people circle, and some into the bird people circle. So when I post something, exclusive 10% off bird seed, I will then target the circle of bird people, and only the bird people will see that coupon. Why would the dog people care about a coupon on bird seed? I can put people into multiple circles. Someone is a cat person and a bird person. I put them both into the same, I put both of those, that one person into two circles. I could do that. So here I'm saying, publish this just to the people that I've circled. And it's a little confusing, but there's a special circle called following. Because let's say I'm following, I don't know, the White House, I'm following the city of San Diego, I'm following these entities that I'm not really going to be interacting with, maybe just kind of uh, reading their posts, so they won't care that I'm posting something for them. So selecting your circles will sort of send this post to all of those that I have circled, except the ones in the following circle, in the circle called following. The terminology is a little confusing. But this is for all my connections. Just send it to my connections. And I can actually add public and circles, although that's kind of contradictory. If I put circles, now it's not public. I'm only sending this to, the, to those that I've connected with. If I put it on public, anyone could see it. And if I put it on your circles and public, well, anyone can see it, but I'm also alerting my followers there's something new here. Yes? Are your contacts and circles the same for all of the different businesses and your, and your profile, or do you create mm -hmm. that new in each age and profile? It's separate. It's all separate. It's separate. Just like I said that my personal stuff will not show up in any of these businesses, and that would be terrible. So my personal circles and connections and such don't show up available on any of these business pages okay, so and vice versa. that individually on mm -hmm. each page. That's right. Okay. We also have extended circles, which I think this one is very useful. Extended circles. Everyone in your circles, plus all the people in their circles. So that's friends of friends. Let's say I have five followers, I have five connections, five people in circles. So this, I'm basically sending it to those five. And those five people could have five people that they're connected to. So now I've reached, you know, five times five, 25 people instead of just the five that I'm directly connected to. So I like using this one, extended circles and public. So my strategy is I do extended circles and public. Because your circles would only be your circles. But extended circles is your circles plus their circles. So the friends of friends, you're reaching more people. And public. So the default is for people that create a personal profile that they will see extended circle content but you can go into a setting and turn that off. I don't want to see the friends of the friends stuff. I can turn that off if I want. People can turn that off if they want. The default, though, is that it's on. So you might not reach all those 25 people. You might reach 18 people, but that's still better than the five people you would have reached only with your circles.
it, as I start to make connections with people, I could put people into the customer circle, into the VIP circle, following circle, and I can make any amount of circles I want. Cat people, bird people, snake people. I can put them into any circles I want. Um, the people will not know what circle they get put into. So you could put people into the annoying people circle. <laughs> and they won't know that they're annoying. Uh, it's not going to send, if you say send a post to the annoying people circle, it's not going to, it's, when it shows it to those people, it's not going to list it as from annoying people circle. No. no. <laughs> nope, it's just going to say Victor's Bakery shared something with you. That's it. Not you, annoying person. <laughs> yes. How do you put the people into the circles? Are you going to go with that? Yeah, when we start to connect with people, then we'll talk about adding them to circles. It's pretty okay. easy. Right now, it's sort of chicken or the egg. Which do we do first? Talk about people? Talk about posting? I want to talk about posting first because we don't, we're not going to get followers without content. So I don't have very many circles and I don't have anyone in any other circle, so it doesn't make sense here. But let's say I had connected with other people within my company, or maybe I do have some sort of tier of VIPs, so I could put those people into the VIP circle, and now only those people would see it. Not public, not friends, not friends of friends, only those seven people. So I can mix and match that with other circles. But I'm going to recommend, usually, you're going to be using extended circles and public. Together? Yes. Because if you only leave extended circles, no one else can run into that post. They had to have been in your circle or part of a friend of a friend. Public is that anyone can see it if they search for it and find oh. you. So are the people who are in extended circles, are they going to get it twice? I mean, they're part of the public as well. No. The public is not being alerted. The public is just that it's there. Like if I see a flyer on that table, it's not that the flyer jumped at me, I might have to walk by it to see it. But doing extended circles is like I walk up to a friend, I walk up to you and give you the paper, and then you turn around and give it to someone else. By force? Technically by force. It automatically goes to the followers, the friends of the friends, yes. That's why there's the option to turn that off, because sometimes people don't want to see that. But it's on by default. Yes, but you still want to select public, because if you did not select public, no one except the people in those circles could ever see it. So you still want any general person to see it. And if you notice, there was the ability here to also add names. So let's say someone that has a Google Plus account, you can start writing their name there, and it'll search Google Plus, and there might be more than one Victor Campos, so you might not reach the right Victor Campos, but you can target that one post to someone or multiple people on Google Plus. Uh, none of these are me. I never seem to show up. <laughs> but um, let's say that Victor Campos and this Victor Campos. So they're going to get an alert that says Victor's Bakery shared a post with you. So we can target it to specific people, but not public. This is like a private message in a, in a sense. I'm sending it directly to those people. I could also add public, and now I've specifically sent it to those people and anyone that runs into this post by searching. So even though those Victor Campos are in your contact list, you can still... Yes. So there is the potential for abuse there, but uh, yeah, they're not in any of my contact lists or circles or anything, and I'm sending them something. Mm -hmm. That's an option that can also be turned off. Do not get messages from people that I don't know. But the default is, yeah, send me messages from people I don't know. Also, we've got the option email addresses. So I could put in here an email address, and if that email address is associated with someone on Google+, it's just the same as sending it directly to them. But if they're, they're not on Google+, this will send an email to someone. It'll say, Victor's Bakery shared something with you on Google+, click here to view it. And it'll bring them back to Google+, where it'll ask them to log in. Well, if they don't have an account, they can't really see it or, or interact with it, it'll ask them to create an account they may or may not, Again, you're not going to quite convince people to drop everything, to drop Facebook, and come over to Google+. 
They'll be happy at Google, at Facebook, but we're going to reach a new audience on Google+. This is not going to work like an email distribution list. There's no way for you to upload a thousand emails here. You would have to manually write a thousand emails. So you're not going to use this as an email distribution list. You're not going to use this for your email blasts. That's what MailChimp is for and Constant Contact and all of those other things. There's not too much use, in my opinion, for the email address here. You're going to use either circles or individual people. You're going to use public and extended circles. So after all of this theory, for the moment, I'm going to recommend extended circles and public. You can decide what works best for you as we go on. And now finally, after all this time, let's share it. Let's publish it. So there we go. So now I've sent that over to all my zero followers and all their zero followers and public so anyone could see it. And then now we see the result of the formatting. There's finally in bold, there's uh, exclusive coupons, italics, and cats only stri striked out, struck out. And then there it is to remind you. There's a little triangle next to your posts. You might not see it. I don't like it's invisible until you put your mouse in the corner. If you don't see that little triangle in the corner, put your mouse in the corner, but it's telling you here. Nice, you just posted something. You can click that triangle to to come back to edit it. What if you made a what if you made a great post except for that typo? Well, you can go back to that corner there, click the triangle, and select edit post. It takes you back to edit it. What's that? It says Google. Google. Yes, I did that on purpose. You want to click that, edit, and I can go back. Google. And so that automatically, it doesn't get sent again to all the people. It just automatically they get the latest version of the post, but not not that it's sent to them again. It just changes. And there are other options there that you can look at on your own. Um, but what I want to do is, uh, like I said, you can look at that on your own. Uh, let me get back to a couple of other things. But um, this was our very first post. We don't have any followers yet. Um, but I, if I had followers, I would have sent that to people that I chose extended circles to. And what that means is, on the top right corner of their Google+, Plus, there is a little gray circle that mine has a red number 1. Does anyone else have a red number there? Everyone else has a gray circle there? Or a little, is there a little bell? Okay, you see a little bell. Those are the notifications. You don't have any notifications unless you have a number there. A notification means someone sent you something on Google+, someone shared a photo with you, someone made an update, that's a notification. So this is what I'm saying about um, you, you, you've built it uh, and they won't come unless, you know, unless they know about it. So somehow I have one notification. I didn't set this up beforehand. Something has happened. Some alert has happened to my account. I'm going to click on that. And it says, Next Channel Media commented on and plus one and added me to their circles. So probably someone from this class, thank you, added, interacted with my account. Someone interacted with my account. Eventually, you'll get that as well. You will post something. You will get the notification up there. So you went back to normal, the bell. I got a comment. I got a plus one and they added me to a circle. So now if I publish something, at least one person will see it. Well, actually more, because I'm going to do the publish to extended circles. So if I connect with them, as I'll show how in a moment, I'll send it to them, and then automatically that will get sent to their followers. Yes? So if I post something and it goes to someone who is in my circle, do they get an email notification and then they know to go on Google Plus and look at it? They do, 
the default is that they will also get an email to remind them to go check it on Google Plus. But the there is a Google Plus app, and you can get notifications that way too. So there's many ways to get that notification on, if you're not on Google Plus. You can get it on email. You can get it a little pop up on your phone, or if people like they're on Facebook, they never turn it off. You know they'll get the notification there too. So your circles can really grow this way. Like, yes. Do you have to be careful? Like you know you don't know who this company is, so you need to like look at them first and find out if you know who they are before you add them to your circle. You exactly. Order? So, so let me show that. Um, well. Let me show it in this way. I'll get back to them. Uh, up here on um, near the top, you've got Search Google Plus. That is a search box that will let you search for anything in Google Plus. This is not a regular Google search. This is not going to search, you know, your local business or your, you know, it's not going to be like a, like a like a regular Google search. It's only going to search for content in Google Plus. So let's say up here on Search. Let's search for my company. Let's search for PMD Interactive. The right company is the one with this gray triangular logo. But up on Google Plus search, start searching PMD Interactive, and you should see my company. Click on my company, PMD Interactive. It'll take you to my company's profile. We'll show you the icon, some contact info about posts, photos, YouTube, graphic. We'll show you some statistics, 99 followers, 120,000 views videos about so forth just like what you have set up for yourself there's the about screen tagline what are we about what is what is a PMD interactive anyway you can look there posts are what we've added to to Google Plus so this is what I'm saying about that if you also add public people can see what you've posted if you've only added it to extended circles or other private methods they will not see this but usually you will be wanting to put your business page content public because you want people to see <coughs> what you're about so that therefore they're enticed and it's very difficult but that they're enticed to click the follow button because it's nice for people to see your content but it's even nicer for them to follow you to build that captive audience so right now there's 99 people one percent of that is one person uh, nine people um, one person so if you were looking at any particular account on Google+, they should all have the button to follow. Don't click it, but if you put your mouse on top of the button, it says, would you like to put them into the following circle, customer circle, VIPs, team members, or create a new circle? I will follow you if you follow me. I can't guarantee that. We'll see what happens. So, um, if you... If you would like to follow any account, you have those options. That's how you organize them. That's how you put them into a circle. They will not know what circle they get put into. So the following circle is the special circle. People and pages you add to circles will be notified. Others may see this information publicly. People you add to circles can use Hangouts with you. OK, got it. So I've added that company. Well, actually, not really. I don't want to follow them anymore. You just hover over them, take the check mark away. Unfollow. Let's say I do want to follow accounts, but into a brand new circle I call companies. Maybe I'm going to put all the companies that I follow. It'll give you suggestions. I'm going to put all the companies that I follow in a companies circle. Question. So what's the difference between the following circle and the... Yeah, regular circles. It's just the difference you explained before? Yes. When I'm sharing something and I choose uh, my circles, I believe it's called, it will be sent to all of them except the following circle. So the customers, VIPs, team members, and companies would see it, but not the following circle. It's like a special circle that doesn't get notified. If you want 
No, it's smart enough to send it once. So yeah, like that. I'm putting them in companies and VIPs. I don't. They'll only get notified once. So my phone is telling me here I'm getting notifications that my company is getting followed. So one of the strategies to get followers basically is to give and you will get. You give likes or plus ones and shares and comments and you will get plus ones and shares and follows. You give, you do following, you give following, you will get follows. And so doing searches up here. Let's say I'm a bakery. So I'm start I'm going to type in bakeries. It might give me suggestions for companies that exist already as bakeries. I could ignore those and just click the search button and then that will show me all content on Google Plus that is public. It'll show me people and pages, it'll show me posts. So this one right here, Tiny Urban Kitchen. In case you missed it, a tour of Montreal bakeries and bagel shops. So, something related to this content appeared with that search. Yes? What information, when we set up our profile, prompts the public search? So when someone searches for your, not your particular company, but say they're just doing a search, like what information on our profile well, notice here, I searched for the words bakery, but it also gave me the result, the cake zone. So that word is not in there at all. Most likely what happened was they have the term bakery somewhere in their about, okay. and probably also in their posts. Okay. So it's going to be the content that you're adding to Google+, Plus, which will inform this search. So that's why one of the first things we did was, let's edit our profile. Let's fill it in completely. Let's add some keywords. That's what people could search for. That's why we also published one post to no one. And I would actually write this down. I would actually write between three and five posts before I start to try to get followers. Because if someone were to visit my profile right now, if they happen to find it, all that they're going to see is one post about, hello, I'm happy to be on Google+. That's not enough to entice most people to follow. I want you to think about three to five posts that I can add, that you can add, and you have text, photos, links, videos, events, and polls. You won't have time to talk about each of them, they're pretty self-explanatory, but photos uh, are pictures worth a thousand words and at least one follow. So if you start to add this content, three to five posts, yes, you don't have any audience yet, but this is helping you build that audience. So if I post five things, if this one week I'm going to post one thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, rest on the weekend. Maybe when I come back on Monday, I might already have a follower because I've got something that someone might care enough about to follow me about. This one post is not going to cut it. <laughs> Again, is are your friends going to be a viable business for you? Are they going to... Uh, are they going to keep liking your stuff over and over but never buy your product? Well, I just meant for the initial three to five. Three to five posts, not followers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, simply searching at the top here for the keywords about what your company is about, and then here um, I see this result, Tiny Urban Kitchen. I have then those those four interactions. I can plus one it. Tiny Urban Kitchen just got a notification that said Victor's Bakery plus one your post. Tiny Urban Kitchen can then go to my profile and seem and you know deem me worthy enough to follow. Hopefully I have good content to entice that. I'm gonna go on. Meritage at Steiner Ranch. Top three bakeries to try in Austin. Oh, that's nice. I Plus one. Sure, it's a viable thing. So here I am 
I'm not going to be just randomly plus oneing everything. Precision Chris Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram doesn't have anything to do with my company really. So I wouldn't really plus one them just because they came up for some reason. Um, so you see the plus ones are kind of transitory. That's why I said they're the lowest level. They're not the worst thing. The worst thing is to do nothing. But I can plus one and move on. The next level is that I can share. If I, if I like this and, and six other people like this, I can click to share. Well, let me do this one. Restaurants and bakeries keen to see the end of dairy supply management from Lori Joyce. So if I click to share this, basically that's going to copy their original post and share it through my account. And I can then share it to my circles and my public. The point of that is that Lori Joyce will get Lori Joyce will get uh, a notification that said Victor Bakery shared your post. And so what is her post? I didn't read it. <laughs> the restaurants and bakeries keen to see the end of dairy supply management. One of the ways. We still have a couple of ways to talk about, more ways, but that's one of the ways. These people, these companies, we want followers, but they don't know we exist. Isn't it like grubby after a while, where you see every Victor's Bakery's commenting on every one of these posts and whenever they share more like this guy's just not... Well, there is a balancing act, yes, but this is, a, this is public, this is always updating, so you might not always see the screen. But yes, you do want to do it judiciously, like I said. I'm not going to do it just on Chrysler Jeep right here because they showed up. I'm going to do it on relevant accounts that I think would be useful for me to get a follow. So one tactic is this, that we are going to interact with random people that might be relevant to my company and plus one their thing, share their thing, comment on their thing. That's one tactic. I've got a few more to talk about. But this is one tactic. And this also works on all the networks. I can do this on Twitter, I can do this on Facebook, Pinterest, etc. It's not the best tactic, but it's one tactic that we can do to, to get the ball rolling. And the tactic, again, to spell it out is you search at the top and then interact with accounts. You give those three, those three types of interactions. You don't have to do a comment and a share and a like a plus one for every one post, you decide judiciously what would make sense. The fourth, the highest level of that interaction is you hover over the account, you click follow. That's the highest one. But you're not going to always get a follow back when you do a follow. Because what do you have to offer them? I'm following them, hopefully, because they have interesting, relevant things I care about to, to know about to follow. I'm not just gonna follow, 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 then yeah that's grubby, yeah that's spammy. I'm going to follow accounts that I hope are relevant and will follow me back. And I have to accept that some, that most, will not follow me back. So this is not the best way to do it, but it is one way and it is viable. Yes? Um, so I'm trying to get other Google Plus members to follow. Mm -hmm. And the person may have a Google Plus personal account or business account. Personal or business, that's right. So up here, Lori Joyce, that's a personal one. And then Travel and Leisure, that's a business one, it seems. So either of those that follow me would be great. Because I could publish something and then those accounts could then use that coupon, subscribe to my newsletter, whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So, this is one way to do it. Let me show you a better way. You want to build a foundation of posting three to five posts to entice people. You want to spend some time going in and searching people and interacting with them. Yes, you are going to interact with random strangers. Remember when you were a little kid and you needed to make a friend on the playground? You had to come up to a little kid and say, let's be friends, and then you're friends. You had to, someone had to start the ball rolling, maybe the other kid asked you to be friends, and now you're best friends. Well, we're doing the same thing here. We're reaching out to brand new people that we don't know on Google+. And hopefully we're getting some of them to follow us. Edwin Gustafsson, now forever close, San Francisco 
La Boulange Cafe and Bakeries. Ah, oh, that's sad. So I'm going to write something here. Ah, oh, that's sad. Maybe something more meaningful. I'm just showing you. I am going to interact. I'm going to be social on a social network. I'm going to act with, interact with people. I don't know these people. That's okay. I'm not going to build my business on the backs of my friends. I'm going to build it on the backs of Edwin Gustafson. I'm going to connect with people that I don't know because that's, 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 a, that's an audience. That's a potential audience, potential customers. And now Edwin got a notification that said Victor's Bakery commented on your post. He might then click on my post, like what my stuff, he might click on my profile, see all my great posts, and s click follow. Also, everyone in that chain that has commented gets a notification. Victor's Bakery commented on that post. So now those five other people got a notification, and they may then say, what's Victor's Bakery about? They click on my profile, they view my profile, they like my stuff, they click follow. So commenting, relevant comments, especially something better than that, is going to possibly get you more interactions. Look for posts where people are commenting, because it's people that are taking time to write something relevant, hopefully. Like Edward Conde and HQSP Urban Street Photos, all of those people got a notification. And some of them are going to ignore it. Most of them will ignore it. Some of them will follow through and convert, which in this case is to become a follower. Oh, Bimbo Bakeries. Company recalls bread sold in 11 states for possible glass fragments. No one's commented there, so never mind. I'm going to go on to see um, what people are commenting about, hopefully something relevant. I'm going to skip that one. But over here, same sort of thing. So someone, well, he commented on his own thing. That's gauche. So um, I'm just going to go on. And anywhere where there's someone might have commented, I'm going to also get in on the conversation. See, that's kind of getting spammy there. Where am I seeing that exact same picture over and over and over? But anyway, um, commenting on posts that have comments already will alert the people that you exist because they don't know you exist. So a good tactic would be to comment on someone that, on a post that already has a lot of comments. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because then they get a notification and some of those people will care enough about you perhaps to follow you. So those are two tactics there. Let me tell you the best tactic, though. Here's the best tactic to get followers on Google+. One of the things I love about Google+, is that there's a strong, vibrant community on topics that I like. Uh, you know, I might be into technology, or I might be into, you know, healthy living, or whatever. There's these sections in Google+, known as communities where people join a community and everything about the community, everything posted to the community is on that topic. These communities are like the classic bulletin boards and such where there are moderators. So these are gathering spaces that regular people on Google Plus create, not the owners of Google Plus. Regular people create communities. Anyone can create a community, but I don't recommend to create your own community because now you have to become a moderator and all of that stuff. But I'll show you here. People can create communities. You can join a community and then post to a community. And therefore you're reaching a captive audience. Even if I have zero followers, I'm going to reach a hundred thousand people if I post to a community with a hundred thousand people about baking. And the way you find that is if you hover over the menu, communities. Here's a few suggestions. Eating right, 993,000 people. Gaming, 801,000 people. Healthy news, health news, 403,000 people. As I scroll down, I'll see more suggestions. If I'm not finding a place I like, I've got search. Search on the right here. Search communities. 
let's say I'm searching for communities about cookies. Let's see how many other cookie monsters there are. Cookies. Cake Sweets and Biscuits, 2,482 members. Cake Divas, 984 members. Tough Cookie Mommy, 695 members. So these communities are full of people, in theory, that care about a particular topic. Some of them clearly just say join, and some of them say ask to join. The ones that say join, I can click on join, but don't click join yet. I can click on join and right away start interacting with those people. The ones that say ask to join, one of the moderators is going to check you out and see if you're worthy to join the community. And this has nothing to do with the people, the company of Google+. Plus. Google Plus is letting people create communities and run them how they want within the rules of the Google Plus with you know no harassment and violence and bullying and all of that. Uh, but the people that can run a community could be tyrants. I've dealt with at least one community like that. Uh, and good thing it's only been one so far. But my suggestions here about communities are when you search communities, try to find communities with at least 1,000 members. Because if it's under that, it's, that's not enough of a gene pool, really, right? To, to connect with relevant people. 984 is close enough, I would think about that. 695 is getting a bit low, but I am seeing ask to join, which sounds exclusionary, which might be useful, actually. 493, that's a bit low. I might not really worry about cookie connection. Cake, sweets, and biscuits even though that's not how you spell biscuits in the U.S. Um, maybe I might want to ask to join that, but I'm probably not going to get accepted if they only see one post. So don't click join on any of them yet. Click on the icon of the community to get a preview of what's in the community. Because I might find a community that has 5,000 people. I forgot to say also. Try not to join communities that don't have much activity. 1,100 posts, 1,900 posts, 470 posts. If there's a community with 500 people and 40 posts, that's a ghost town. People joined it, no one's contributing. This one's got 2,400 members and 2,600 posts. Good activity. This one's got 984 members. It's got more activity than members, which could mean more spam. I don't know that until I preview the community. That's why I said don't just click join. You want to click the community to then check it out by seeing okay. Usually there's going to be some sort of about community which tells you the rules. Make sure you read the rules of communities because you can get kicked out for cake and cookie decorators to share and enjoy. Okay, that's pretty open-ended. I've seen some that say, do not post links to your commercial website. Do not post more than three times a day. Uh, do not cross-post, etc., etc. Make sure you read the rules of the community. Um, then I'm going to look at... So this person posted this, no activity. This person posted that, no activity. 7 plus 1s, 4 plus 1s, no activity, 15 plus 1s, 3 plus 1s. It's kind of on the low side of activity. People seem to be a bit apathetic in this community, unless you have something really amazing and then it might catch on. So I'm sort of not quite feeling that confident about joining this community. It's a nice cake, but only two people liked it. Maybe I'm posting my stuff here, no one's going to pay attention. That's why I said try to go with communities with at least a thousand members, but then also look at the community to see if there's activity. If I go back to communities, maybe the cookie, maybe, what did I search for? Cookies? Maybe that keyword wasn't the best keyword. What about just dessert? Recipes and desserts, 11,000. Food, dessert, and wine, 1,800. Okay, let me check out this recipes and desserts created by this person about this community. You will find some of my favorite recipes that I cook often for my family and friends. Also, a few of the recipes I have 
that have been passed down, new pests. Now it looks pretty open-ended. Let's see here. Holiday desserts, no activity, no activity, two plus ones, plus eleven, plus three, plus eight, plus six. Okay, this one seems to have more activity than the previous one. Also just because of the numbers, number of people. So I might think this would be viable. So let's say I found a community with a good amount of people, a good amount of activity, the rules are not so harsh, then I would click join. And what that does is share. Now I can post to those 11,000 people. I have zero followers, but now I can post something here and in theory 11,500 people can see this. Always read the community because sometimes it says do not post this, make sure you introduce yourself, only post once a day, read the rules. It's usually on the top right somewhere. And usually there are going to be sections. If I start to post something, such as, hello everyone, happy to be here. That's a terrible post, but let's say I'm going to post that. It's going to say, post it to, not to circles anymore. Where specifically in this community will you post to? In the discussion, in the dessert recipes, and every community is different. The moderators decide the sections. Always make sure you read the rules, follow the rules, and post your content in the appropriate section. Because if there's more than one moderator, or if one of the moderators is a tyrant, they may either move your post to the right section, or they may just remove your post. Worse yet, they may kick you out of the community, and you've just lost access to those 11,000 people. And no, you will not be able to go and complain to Google Plus that this moderator is being really mean. I've done it, and they say, sorry, we have no control over that. So you don't want to get kicked out of a community. So I'm going to post this. It fits into discussion, I guess. But let's say dessert recipes. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. Uh, here's our recipe for grandma's key lime pie. And add the link to my website. If that web page existed, it would then show you a preview of the link. And so here I'm posting something to a community with 11,000. I'm posting something relevant that the community would care about. I'm posting it in the right place. I'm following the rules. I'm sharing. And that potentially has been shown to 11,000 people. That's the most important tip I can give you about Google+. Find and join as many communities as you want, as are relevant. Join them, read the rules, post to what's important to those communities. Within reason, you might have to juggle some posts that are just sort of like, um, how would you call it? One would be commercial posts, and one would be non-commercial posts. So this one's a commercial post. If the link worked, it would have been a link back to my website. Come to my website, click my link, buy my thing. And some are simply going to be posts about, hey, everyone, look at this pie. You know, no, no, I don't have to be a salesman all the time. And that's going to also get annoying. That's going to maybe get you a reprimand from the moderator or kicked out of the community. You have to balance the salesmanship of it all and the social media aspect, the social networking of it all. Uh, as the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. These concepts will apply over and over and over on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, over and over and over. We're running out of time, but when we come back next time, when we talk about the next network, this will be very familiar when we do it for the next network, Twitter. But the thing I really want to leave you with is if you're going to use Google+, take advantage of using communities, because that's where you're going to reach an audience, especially when you start with zero followers. As you get followers, you know, I have at least one follower now, I'll probably get some more as I start to post relevant stuff here. And as I start to get followers and I start to share to extended circles, I'm reaching more and more people. Snowball effect. I'll get more and more followers. And not to show off, but let me show off here. I've got here on my personal profile, 
I like Google Plus. I use it on a regular basis and it shows. What? 3.1 million views. What do you post there? <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff. Naked woman. Batman. <laughs> A uh, little video of Star Wars, my video of the frittata I baked, <laughs> Comic-Con photos. So um, you don't know all those people. I don't know. How many do you think you actually know? No, that's the thing. I, yeah, I don't know them. I have a following on Google+, Plus, but that's the thing. You don't have to follow everyone that you follow. So Comic-Con Comic stuff, computer stuff, technology stuff, and... Well, I've been interesting using, because you don't have that many followers, but you have a lot of views. I, po I post a lot to communities. Notice this. I posted this to the comic book speculating community. I posted this to the makers community. I post a lot to communities. And I build followers, but I have more that I reach by posting to communities. So it does work, and I can show examples from clients as well. One very quick example, and then we're out of time, and I got to get on the road. But uh, this client over here, same sort of thing. This is reaching up to a million followers now, and they haven't been on it as long as I have. Right? Not a million followers, a million views. Is the rate targeted towards a certain area? You cannot target to locations unless you get to a community that is targeting a location. You can search San Diego. You can search Southern California and such. So that's it for the moment. I still have lots to talk about, but we're out of time. Uh, you want to s send me an email for these videos. Yes. And uh, you want to make sure you've enrolled properly. I'll see you again next Wednesday. We'll talk about the next network. Maybe come with questions next time, and we'll keep learning.